All right, so Huang just got castle dropped on his face. He's lost two straight now. Phosphor is officially warmed up. And we're in game three now between these two. And the expectation every time you see Phosphor is fast castle. The Burmese one is most likely um, going to be surrounding Arambai. Now Huang um, has come forward right away and starts to steal this board. And Phosphor it was just coming out to take it. And he actually, I think, tried the house Diagro trick there as well. That's not going to happen. And Huang doesn't lose these guys. He's actually the one that started this. You'll see other pros do it now. I do it myself. But he will go with the stop technique. Everyone else would weave. But Huang presses the stop hotkey. So he just, he runs, stops, runs, stops. And um, yeah, he's going to bring that boar across the map. Phosphor is still following, actually. Which I have to assume, I mean, he's been following for a very long time. I have to assume that he knows the villager is still following. This is a little untypical of him to bring the villager this way. Now, Huang's gone for Ethiopians. I, again, I could see, like, a fast castle archer idea. I do not really understand why Phosphor brought the villager forward. Usually, he, he either tries to counter lame, or he tries to go home and push in deer. But, you know, he might feel like he really needs some food here. And, oh, he just missed that boar! Look at that! He just missed that boar! Might have been able to take that one. But I think he wants to attack now, and Huang sees those, that Vil and instantly knows to queue up Loom and get away. So now he sees the board, but that would be like, now Huang knows you're here. Okay, he doesn't care. So now, now let's see Phosphor. Now, I think Phosphor also uses the stop technique, but there's a scout here now. Is this why he brought the villager? <laughs> Oh my god, now he has more HP on his scout. Well, it all makes sense now. <laughs> it all makes sense. This is why you bring the Vill. Because otherwise, you can't really do anything about it. Wong can still try and block. Okay, so you gotta stay close enough to the boar here, which is difficult. See, he's weaving. He's not using stop. I think he'll mess up because of that. I'm a big stop guy. Oh, uh-oh. Okay, so now 8 HP on the scout. Wong's Scout is 7 HP. Huang loses his scout. Huang loses his scout. Now, if he takes any more hits from the boar, the scout will die here. Phosphor is probably sweating. He's bringing in his own boar right now. No way, man. I think Huang didn't get to see the exact HP and just thought, like... Oh, there's the jag now. Just thought that it was worth the chance there. Oh, man, Phosphor is letting this get a little too close, but he's going to get his food back. So it's going to be two boars for both. And then you're not, <coughs> you're not going to have your scout of your Huang to push in deer, which is a really big deal. Like, this might be a pretty bad boar lore here. Oh, no, I was just going to say it's worth it if you don't lose your scout. He tried to keep it underneath the TC. You can't be cute there. Because now um, he can't push deer. And then what about Huang? Well, Huang doesn't know about his deer. He doesn't know about these deer. Huang's already building a mining camp. Huang is not going fast castle. Well, actually, he might go fast castle with like a market. But, yeah. And now is Phosphor looking... Let's see, is he misses sheep? Is he looking for deer? Is he going to push in the deer with a vill right now? That's... <laughs> yep, that's what he's doing. I, I'm going to... Let you guys watch this as I refresh myself here. But I, imagine if the scout's still there, right? This is so much easier because you can accidentally click the deer here and kill it. This is smart, though. I mean, he really needs the food for the fast castle. I see this villa's moving around. Maybe he didn't have his stone scouted. I want to just go back slightly. Uh, He did. I'm just not really sure. Maybe he's looking for sheep. Who knows? But he needs that food. Okay. Wong's eco setup is making it really hard to guess what he's going for. It must be archers. But he's going to have a ton of gold because he gets the plus 100 food and plus 100 gold. Yeah, I think <coughs> it's going to be fast archers here. He doesn't really know exactly where Phosphor's resources are, which is interesting, though. 
And there goes Phosphor with everything over to stone. What am I drinking? I am drinking a rum and coke right now. And I said earlier, man, like, this is the stream to have a, a good old rum and coke too, so. Tessay says, hi, used to watch your videos on YouTube two months ago. First time watching on Twitch. I'm 40 years old, used to play AOE 2 20 years ago. Yo, welcome. Salutes in chat, please. Tis oh, I can't say your name. Oof, bad first impression. <clears throat> ah, oof. Uh, <laughs> can we can we redo? <laughs> uh, Tessay no te te say no to te say no cack. I'm gonna say Tesse. T S E Tesse. All right. Welcome, my friend. That was a tricky one for me. <coughs> yeah, the last part of that came off a little wrong. I'm sorry. So he got. He got two of the deer. Looks like he's going to push in, push in the third. And Huang is coming with the uh, villagers. And I think Huang will go tower. I think he went... Like, if Huang were to know this existed here, Huang would definitely tower this. It's the perfect tower against Phosphoru because you get to the... Um, you deny the gold and you deny the wood. Denying stone is a mistake against him because then he'll just shift over to gold and he'll just buy the rest of the stone. Everyone always thinks you deny the stone. Nope, don't deny the stone. With your only tower, no. You want to deny the gold and the wood. Yeah, I really want to kill Vils. And you want to kill Vils fast. And if you can lame, which is what happened here, it can really disrupt the fast castle. So right now, like, I'm thinking that this could be kind of tricky for Phosphor to click up. I wonder if Phosphor is going to counter tower this. Mr. Moneybags, happy to do it, man. I, I I can't promise to do streams at this time all the time, but I, I've said before I want to do it more. I still mean it. This is this is proof of that. Because where's everyone watching from right now? We probably still have some people from Europe. There were people at the start of the stream who said, how dare you make me stay up? Because they don't want to miss this. But I'm guessing we have a lot more NA than my typical streams, right? And then we might have, you know, occasional Kiwi in the mix. Aussie in the mix. Lots of Canada. Lots of US. Awesome. Also, lots of lots of prime symbols there. Wink, wink. <laughs> so, as we all know, this is peak Age of Empires. Chopping straggler trees. We talked about this in Loyola Legends many times. Um, Huang is trying to deny every resource he can. Phosphoru has enough stone for a castle, which we talked about before. And he's still, he's not really scared of this tower. See, that's the best thing Phosphor does with his strat, is he does not freak out or respect your towers or your archers at all. He just uses this time to chill, and then what's going to take care of this tower is the castle later on. And then if you're Huang, you see it, and you think, like, do I send my archers into the tower? What do I do? You run over here, and then he just backs away again. Hmm. Huang has... Okay, Eco, right? Like, I mean, he's really good resources collected. He obviously has way more vills. But the concern, again, is his opponent's going to be in Castle Age. I think Huang's done as good a job as possible here. Except for, like, maybe losing his scout. But even losing his scout, that, that just happens. Here we go. Jema, thank you for the resub. Thank you. Les, welcome back. There's the castle. So, yeah, you can't really deny the castle because... You'd have to get underneath the TC, and then he can just garrison. The tower does help, but if you're in Phosphorus position, you just look at the villager that's being attacked and pull it to the side. Not too far to the side, Phosphorus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep. Phosphorus hasn't lost any vills. The tower is going to be shot down right away. The lumber camp is already here, so we can take wood. And then he can also mine gold. And he's already making Arambai. And Arambai absolutely shred. Well, I mean, Feudal Age units. Uh, but, like, it, it's really complicated against Arambai when you have, uh, like, groups of archers clumped up. You got to keep them in spread formation, ideally. Let's see what Huang can do here. It's so interesting, though, because, like, no one was talking about how insane Arambai are. 
are until phosphor. Aaron by being insanely good was a thing back in, uh, I don't know. What year was it, guys? I think it was pre-DE Aaron by were insane. But, you know, they saw a series of nerfs. Yeah, pre-DE, they were really good. I remember um, Burmese being the best Arabia Civ with, like, lots of Aaron by back in King of the Desert 1. Okay, so now Phosphor's looking around. Now, another thing that, I mean, obviously this guy... He designed the strap, but something that's really critical here, because you know your opponent's going to try and get to crossbow and castle age, is the forward siege workshop. And so he builds it right on Huang's face. And back at home, you got wood, you got gold. I, I said it, I think Burmese, Bengalis, Portuguese, the best civs for this guy. And Huang is on the way to castle age now. Are we about to have another game where Huang's TC gets eaten by somebody else? That's crazy to me, man. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's a nice snipe. That's a really nice snipe. Because it's 40 villagers versus 25. So every time you kill a unit, you're just like, yes. Thank God. 2021, the walls could go down to Arambai. Yeah. I don't know. There's been a lot of instances where Arambai have been very strong. But it's, it's not something that we say these days, right? They're flinging darts, and sometimes it feels like they're flinging darts. All right, so let's think through what Huang can try here. So he's Ethiopians. Faster firing archers is definitely the most important part to stick to. Uh, he'll need to add his own siege, most likely. And here, Phosphor tries to sit underneath the tower. There are archers here. He has to run away and now split from the tower fire, which he does. Um, I think, you, yeah, your own siege and crossbow is basically how you play this. And again, you have to be thinking, I have superior eco. I wouldn't mind a sneaky tower behind the wood line, but that could be spotted. And TC is halfway down, but Huang is at 87% the Castle Age, so he should be able to make it to Castle Age. These guys have an elo uh, pretty much the same elo right now of 2170. Wouldn't it be really funny if they do this play all seven and they're still so addicted they need to play more? Which I'm not speaking from experience at all. And uh, then they get each other in ranked after this whole thing. <laughs> that would be classic. <laughs> we still have plenty more games to go here. This is just game four. All right. So three mangonels. I mean, Huang needs some good trades here. The siege is more of a problem than the Aaron buy. Bosfer only has three of them here now. And we had a game earlier where the tower was really important in Huang, part of Huang's defense. Huang has his, his TC eaten. It's not Celt eat TC. It's Roman and Burmese eat TC here. I kind of like how Huang isn't making a new one because he can focus fully on the micro. Uh-oh. That's not good. Huang is getting completely overrun here. He's saving up for a castle, which could help in defense, but the castle could easily be denied. Huang needs better trades. The Phosphor might need repairs here in a second on some of this siege. Usually keeps that forward villager around. Oh, nice shot there from Huang. Nice little surprise. And hold on, the tower will get a kill. Huang still keeps his mango alive. That's good for Huang. Like, that's a nice trade. Being pushed off of gold is not... But you got to think about relocating to other golds against this guy. I've said it before. You just you just run over here. Half of it is probably just me coping with my own horrible situation when I play Phosphor. But I really do think you just got to think. His eco is crap. His eco is crap. His eco is crap. Don't give him free kills. His eco is crap. Let's chill. And Wong gets some good engagements. And funnily enough, actually, Phosphor is adding eco in these moments. So you could just tell, at least I can. You know, normally the guy's micro is a little bit better than that, but he is focusing on, you know, adding a little bit more. And suddenly the multitasking is kind of an issue. <laughs> Varian says, I've never in my life rooted for Huang, but there's a first time for everything. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Do I have any players who are around 1900 or 2k plus right now? Lurking in chat who want to poke their heads out and tell me what they think of this. 
I bet you I could guess there's at least five people 2K Plus watching this. At least. And I want to hear, because everyone <laughs> gets really frustrated playing both of these two. I want to hear who people are rooting for. Matz is in chat. Matz, who are you, aka Black Forest, who are you rooting for? Oh, man. Redemption is in, guys. Cheap monk upgrades for the Burmese. Redemption is in. The monk is still converting. The conversion comes in. Huang with a horrible moment. And watch these guys go splat. Splat. Get darted, Huang. They hit so many different targets. Uh, Phosphor almost killed his own units. And that was redemption paying off big time. What Phosphor didn't expect, though, was for Huang to have a castle there. Um, Fly Like Django says I want both to lose. Django, are you... What's your what's your rank these days, dude? I haven't seen you play in a bit. Django was around 2K, or at 2K before. Really? I guess, uh, you know... One player that absolutely despises both of these two... Well, not, not like them, but, you know, the strategies is Nikov, but I think Nikov might be on the Red Bull grind right now. The tower is going to get taken down. There's, like, so little army for Huang. And these are not guard towers, so regular watchtowers go down pretty quickly. Phosphor has added Vils behind this. He only killed three Vils in this game. He idled his TC way more than Huang. But it's 37 vills for him right now. And monks are out to take out any counter siege and to heal up the Arambai. Huang is going to find it way more difficult to find good engagements here. He, he really needed to, in that moment, probably use his crossbows against the monks. Huang will hop out. Bosfru sees it, splits to the side. Great micro. And of course, the monks are lurking, right? The monks are waiting. Oh, actually goes for the shot there. A little risky. And the risk does not pay off. Huang still chilling. As chilling as one can be in these moments right now. Cat says Phosphor and Survivalist played me 2v2 with another 2k and both dungeon rushed FC sergeants. <laughs> I'm sure that was a great time. But now you have a story, you know? I played team games with Huang, and we both ate TC. And the only thing the other team said was, really, T90? Didn't say anything to Huang. And the funny part was, is when the game ended, Huang immediately re and picked Celts and went to play more Arabia. But, yeah, the person just said, really, T90? And I was like, yup. I thought it was going to be good content, but... Let's just say the TC's got eaten a little bit too fast. Four mangonels. I mean, against Arambai, if you get big shots on Arambai or the monks, you can kill them with this many mangonels as well. Mangonels and, and Vils is just all that Huang has on his mind right now. And it is kind of awkward for Phosphor because there's a castle here. There's towers and, and TC's. I mean, there's a lot of resistance. So, one mistake, and Phosphor could have problems. Phosphor is going to try and convert the tower? He thought about it. Ballistics now on the way for Huang. That's a big upgrade here. Really helps this situation with the castle. Helps the towers and helps the crossbows, which he's been able to build up a little bit. <laughs> oh, he's doing the siege tower again to, to distract the tower fire. So he can use the monks against the siege. Dude, do you guys think we ever would have figured that out? Do you think anyone would have ever done this if not for Phosphor? It's the same thing with the whole Kelt ETC play. There's just certain players that revolutionize the game, change things. to see the game a little bit differently. Now, it didn't work too well in the other game. I think it's going to work better here because there's we're a couple games in. He feels like he has the lead. I think there's less pressure here. Wong needs to go here for wood. He drops TC number two, TC number three. Technically, like, two, three, and four because he lost his first TC. But now watch, right? The siege tower is here to block the tower fire. And then when siege comes in, he will use his monks to convert the siege because the tower can't hit stuff if it's directly behind it. Look at it. 
Huang is, I guarantee you Huang is clicking. Oh, well. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that didn't look too good there, okay? But, but the siege tower still blocked the tower fire. He just forgot about everything else. <laughs> and Huang is back on top, guys. Which, like we said, I think, like, even against monks, if you've got four mangonels, you can kill them off. So, Wong's full mango approach is decent. But it worked! <laughs> Kinda. Sort of. And, I, you know, I'm beginning to worry a little bit for Phosphor here. What a nice hold. What a nice hold from Wong. I thought he was so dead. Siege Tower is getting repaired for round two. Monks are going to need to come on the way as well. New Woodline is in the middle of the map right now for Phosphor. But, I mean, if he loses the middle position, he's in trouble anyway, so. It's, it really just feels like big... Ma oh, my goodness. Big Mango Shots changed this. And just as I was going to say that, that could have been three kills. And, okay, that's fine. You'll take that trade if you're Phosphor. Splits into the shot. And knew he needed to split. Just not in the right moments there. And that's a good moment from Huang. And a good moment from Phosphoru. <laughs> now, Huang's three town centers. So, it does take a little bit more focus on that stuff. But, like, he's really churning out Vils right now. So, I expect Huang to just climb and climb and climb with the Vil lead here. Meaning Phosphoru needs good engagements constantly. Little dance micro. Little attack round back and forth. Phosphoru wins that one. And now Huang's down to one Manganel. Where is Huang going to take gold after this? Go oh, he's got gold here. He's got gold here. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. Monks are a real problem. Type a one in chat if you didn't see the video where I showed the siege tower blocking the arrow thing. And on YouTube, if, if it's the first time, you can just leave a comment with the word pumpkin and everyone's going to be confused. It's pretty sick, man. He originally did it with rams, but I guess it's how tall the siege towers are. They also have faster and have a lot of have a lot of pierce armor, so. Fleabag says I remember Huang. He's an OG player. Oh yeah, Huang's been around forever. I have so many great Huang memories from like 10 years ago. Times were different, but Huang still He's adapted his play, let's be honest. He, he's playing a lot more civilizations here, which is what we, we wanted them to do here. My only worry for Huang was, can he play as many in a play all seven? And look at this from Phosphoru. Phosphoru pushing the tower. There's some weak siege out here, but there's a lot to pay attention to if you're Huang. And Huang is getting pushed again. And again, this is becoming a real problem. He's, gonna, he's not going to have many areas to run to soon. Wong cannot take stone. The other stone is all the way over here, so he can't depend on another defensive castle. I think, honestly, guard tower would have been good before that tower went down. And it's going to be extremely difficult for Huang to defend this now. He needs to use these crossbows somehow to kill the monks and then use his own siege. This is so difficult. You got to hop out of the TC, snipe a monk back in all the time, and, you know, just... Don't make a mistake, because I know your crossbows are going to go down. Yeah, I agree. I think Ethiopian Outpost should have gone up. I think if you build it here, it still gives you tons of vision on that area. That's been part of the issue for Huang, is he doesn't know what's coming. And there, this is what we meant. That was a really nice moment there from Huang. That's precisely what I was talking about. That's so difficult to do. But the TC... The TC is going to go down here. Wong. Oh, he gets the monk, but the, the mangonel gets converted, and the crossbows are going down. And Phosphoru is going to eat the second TC of the game. And Huang, guys, try not to freak out when I say this. Act like it's normal. Huang, who has lost two TCs and just lost all of his army, is about to click up the imp. <laughs> What? <laughs> he's not dead because he's going to click up to Imp somehow. But uh, <laughs> I don't know which TC. I'd be very nervous. Probably not this one. Probably the one next to the castle. 
Let's go, Huang. Click up to Imp. Come on, dude. He's on his way to Imp. Holy crap. What in the world? Phosphor might as well, honestly. But Phosphor doesn't gain as much because... Like, Imp gives you lots of upgrades on archers, which is hugely beneficial. Phosphoru, the, the Arambai don't benefit from blacksmith upgrades, right? So, like, going Imp for Bracer wouldn't be a thing. I don't think he's going to be able to afford Onager. Monk upgrades would be the big one. And, again, uh, Huang actually deletes that one. He's terrified, but... Oh, he's, he's confident! He's dancing! Oh! You can't stop him! The dude's a beast! Okay, Huang, be careful. That was actually a really big moment. Huang needs a tower on this gold. I think, I think Phosphor is getting sick of these crossbows. It's just going to dive on them and delete them. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good moment for Phosphor. You still have the Siege attacking the TC. Taking your opponent off of gold. Huang has more ranges over here to produce more archers. And he does have the resources, but this is a lot of pressure. I still would like to see Huang buy 100 stone and try a tender tower here. I think the towers work really well against Phosphoru. It slows him down enough. Oh, man. You could tell he was sending the siege over here and lost track of it and loses that. But, but guys, listen. Have faith. Because Huang is going to be an imp. And with that micro we just saw moments ago, if you have Bracer... Bracer and Arbalest would be huge. I think he's only going to really be able to afford Bracer. Maybe he goes for chemistry. It's maybe doable. Somehow. We have Imp on the way for Phosphor as well. Now, I think his thinking is actually a forward castle for Trebs. Um, I'm not, I'm not, like, uh, entirely sure. Again, monk upgrades would probably make sense. Huang is an imp. He could barely afford Bracer and Chemistry. He doesn't really have food eco beyond that. Once those upgrades are in, the siege goes down so much faster. Huang, just be careful, man. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. He was probably gathering this group. Can Huang see this gold here? Oh! <gasps> Ooh, that's a big deal. But I guess he, if he frees this up, he still has all this gold. Okay, Bracer is in. Is in. Chemistry's on the way. You're, you're confident enough to fight with Bracer, though. Because you have one more range than the Siege. But Huang knows, like, he loses these crossbows. It could be over. I like the patience. It, it feels weird, but, like, to say that, because you feel you got to push, you're an imp. But actually, like, I think patience is key here because he hasn't had a big mass in a real... Oh! He hasn't had a big mass in a really long time. That's been the main issue for him. And uh, that might be an issue again. He'll outrange the Arambai by three range. Plus, he has Ballistic, which the Arambai don't have. And this is the best game in this series between these two. It is 84 pop for both. Huang's going to have about 25 crossbows. There's going to be a forward castle here from Phosphor. I think he's building a stable to go for bloodlines. Can someone tell me what resources Elite Arambai costs? Is it food and gold? He may actually get Elite Arambai. He's actually got a good enough eco for this. I don't want to be, like, disrespectful because I love both of these two. It's not meant to come off the wrong way. These guys are both playing way better than I'm even used to them playing. Like, this has been a lot of crazy stuff for both of them. Super high level for these two. Like, usually there's some dips in form every now and then. But, man, this is good. And I say that as Phosphor decides to die before Bloodlines, which I don't love. But that is what the Arambai can do! That is what the Arambai can do! That is a Castle Age Arambai. No Imp upgrades. And, you know, there's always going to be a Twitch chatter that says you got to, like, separate your, your crossbows in those instances so you don't take as many hits, which I think is true, but I'm also not sure how much does that make a difference. Look how Phosphor is, like, progressively chopping towards Huang right here instead of taking the wood in the back of his base. Huang's not dead yet. I think this game goes on for another, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> Huang, like especially if Huang finds this, Huang's not going anywhere. 
it would be interesting. Like right now, Phosphor isn't actually punishing Huang's base. I'm very curious what would happen if Huang just sends it and goes directly over to Phosphor's eco. I think Phosphor, though, is going to tread this TC, and then Huang's eco is in shambles. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he ran away with the wood line. Huang seized the lumber camp, too. But I think Huang just went through the same thinking we did. He's like, okay, it'd be really good if I hit his base. But he might have had a moment where he said, but then I lose all of this. He is picking off some Arambai. This has definitely made it awkward for Phosphoru. Man, if Phosphoru just went forward right now. If he just went into Huang's base, Huang's got nothing. But I think he's undecided. And we have Arbalest on the way for Huang. I'm really liking Huang's position. We got Elite Arambai. Maybe Phosphoru wanted to wait for that upgrade. Phosphoru's probably like, where did those units go? And <coughs> yeah, Phosphoru just doesn't know. Or didn't know, he might see it soon that this eco's over here. He's gonna dive in over here. I mean, there's eco everywhere for both of them exposed. This is a slaughter. Huang's gonna love this. Huang's not gonna love the fact he just lost 10 or so vills and some arbalest over here, though. Huang is escaping. <laughs> he is just running to the corner because he thought those vills would die. Did Phosphor see them? <laughs> Did Phosphor see those vills? Wait, is Phosphor out of gold? <gasps> oh, Phosphor really needed that gold. Oh, he's out of stone there too? Uh-oh. I mean, he's got a little bit of gold there. Oh my, Phosphor can take this gold. That's kind of funny, but no, that's not good enough. That's too close to Huang's base. I think Huang might have this. Phosphor down to 50 pop. Phosphor down 40 vils. Huang has held on. But now his gold is getting absolutely obliterated. This is a big problem. But can Phosphor make more army? No. Not right now. It seems like a TC just to keep Vils alive. Wong's move over to Phosphor's base. Really good. But <laughs> he had to defend himself for a long time to be able to have that opportunity. And oh man, Phosphor is falling apart. A lot of his strategy is you're always at the opponent's base and never at his. The Arambai, knowing it's desperate times, they're going to dive, get in close, and Huang has no town center. He had, he built like six this game. Huang has no TC, guys. Just let that sink in. No TC gaming. These Vils are just chilling, taking a break, talking about life. Arambai want to get in close again. He's going to try to get directly on top of the arbs so he could kill the whole group. And it's working. This group is still an issue, though. Like, this group still can't be killed. And I feel like if you run home, this is crazy. Like, if you run home, then Huang has time to stabilize. Wait, does Huang have no gold? Did Huang never scout? Oh, my God! Huang never scouted that gold! They both don't have gold. They both can't make more army. What... Huang is desperate. Huang is coming home. Which maybe means Phosphoru can get back over to this gold. Oh, the treb, the treb, the treb, the treb, the treb. Phosphoru needs to keep that alive. Neither player has villagers on gold. How much gold is even left on the map? 10k. Arambai getting close. Boom! Kills a bunch of arbs. That was really nice engagement for Phosphoru. That was really nice. Huang is probably sweating so much right now. Oh my goodness, I'm sweating so much. And Huang doesn't know that Phosphor only has 39 pop. We know that. Huang doesn't know that. Where are these Vils going? They're not going the right place. <laughs> Huang is a lot of skirms in queue, which should be really good, but that takes time. And he's brought his Arbalest home. I mean, I think that's a positive. Guys... One thing Huang does need to learn with Ethiopians, the outposts have tons of vision and they don't cost stone. When you don't have gold, I think you should be outposting the map. A lot is easier said than done, of course. We're simply casting this. We're not in the moment like Huang is. Okay, Huang is scared of these things now. Huang's castle needs two more treb shots to go down. Oh, Arambai get close. Don't get the hits they want. They're getting closer. Castle's about to drop. He stays next to it. A lot of units are dying. 
There's still more in queue for Huang. I think Huang holds. And Phosphor has no vills on gold. His eco is a wasteland. He could try and maybe get over there. Okay, so let's add this up for a second, though. Let's talk about this. Huang lost every TC he's ever built. Huang lost every castle and tower he's ever built. And he's winning the game. Like... Every tower. I'm not even exaggerating. It's not like he has one left over, you know, tower in the corner. You know, nope, not at all. Every castle, nope, not at all. Phosphor, the score is really close. Phosphor killed a bunch of stuff. This game has been intense. He doesn't know that there's like 20 vills over here. He doesn't know the situation here. He's going to fight this one out. I totally get it, especially with how good the Arambai are. But man, what a game. I just, if if there were 10 vills on gold right now for Phosphor, I'd say it's doable. But I really don't think it's doable because Huang has, again, like no TC, but Huang just has more eco. He's back on this gold. He still has food. He still has wood. And yeah, this is the gold that Phosphor needs. Oh, man. Yes. And Phosphor calls the GG and realizes he's done as we hit the hour mark. The, the show match has been an awesome one, but that game there was special, man. Two special players. There were so many moments in this game where it looked like Huang was dead. So many moments in this game where he should have been dead, but he kept fighting. And really, I think the big thing was Huang counterattacking. Um, but but I'm going to tell you the moment in the game, because I talk about this a lot in my cast, right? Um, so I talk about like controlling the game and army positioning, and I'm going to explain the moment where I think Phosphor is going to regret, okay? So he wasn't certain. From Phosphor's perspective, this army was kind of going forward, but then it disappeared. So like maybe it was looping back, right? But I think when this happens... What should happen in Phosphor's mind? Because this is horrible for him, right? You should say, okay, all of his army is there now. I have to hit his eco. Remember, he trebbed down this TC just moments prior. Huang has nothing here. But Huang took the risk and Phosphor actually ended up over here. So I think if the second, like... Actually, it was a couple moments before. The crossbows are clearly here. And the TC goes down. You Phosphor has to immediately dive. I'm guessing he was waiting for his elite upgrade and he didn't want to take any fights because he knew he couldn't make many more units and he wanted his units to be maxed out. But yeah, I think if he hits here, that's uh, that's 50 vills that either aren't working or die. And then we are real pover poverty gaming. Then it's like 18 vills for Phosphor, sure. But then it's like 22 for Huang. These vills never escape. These vills are never on stone. So, um, yeah, the best defense is counterattack in some instances, and I think that's probably it. There were a lot of other moments, though, but well played. I mean, what a great game. That was such a good one, and hopefully the other games deliver, too. YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. The good news for you is that uh, tomorrow will be the next game from these two, as it is a play all seven. So keep an eye out, like the video, and leave a comment if you enjoyed, and I'll see you then.